In a previous video, we looked at the idea of a distribution of sample means. That is, suppose that we had a population, that uh, a distribution, and we were sampling from that distribution. If we looked at all the independent samples that we could get from there, and found the mean of each one of those samples, we would produce a, a distribution of sample means. Under the right conditions, that distribution will be a normal distribution. Its mean will be, the mean of the sample means will be the same as the mean of the original population. And the standard deviation of the sample means, which is called the standard error, will be the, the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n, where n is the size of the samples that we're picking. We noticed that because this was a normal distribution, we could look, we could uh, find these values so that 95% or any percentage that we chose uh, of the, ex of the uh, sample means would end up between here and here. If we did that, then we could build a margin of error above our sample mean and a margin of error below our sample mean. And 95% of the time, that sample mean will end up between here and here. And whenever it does, then this interval that we built will contain the... Uh, the population mean. Of course, 5% of the time, 2.5% of the time will be out here and 2.5% of the time will be out here. There's a chance that, we're, that uh, we make a, uh, that, that the mean really isn't in that interval. But that's what we mean by a 95% confidence inter interval, is that 95, we're 95% sure that that confidence interval is going to contain the population mean. All right, now what we're going to talk about today is how to find this margin of error. The margin of error is dependent upon the standard deviation of this distribution, or in other words, the, uh, the standard error. So let's look at how that's done. Here's a hand-drawn picture of a standard normal distribution. A standard normal distribution is one, of course, that has an area under the curve of 1. Mu is equal to 0 and a standard deviation is equal to 1. So if, if we were able to, uh, to create that area, let's, let's say that we found these two values so that this was 99%. Let's do a 99% confidence interval. So this is 99% of the population is there. That means that 1% is out in the tails. So half of 1% will be a 0.005 will be up in this tail and 0 0.005 will be down in this tail. Okay. That being the case, we can find, let me just mark it here so that we're keeping track of what we're trying to find, we can find this z value which will tell how many standard deviations above the mean we need to be to get this 99%. Okay, and that's going to be calculated as follows. Because the total area under this curve is 1, and this area up here is 0 0.005, the area below this value I'm looking for is going to be 1 minus 0 0.005. 0 .005. So I'm looking at the Q norm of 1 minus 0 0.005 in a mean equal to 0 and a standard deviation equal to 1. Now the nice thing about a Q norm is by default it's going to be a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. If we don't say anything, R assumes that's the case. So we can do that calculation just like that.
okay? So that's telling us that for this 99% business, we're going to need to go 2.57529. Standard deviations above the mean and that far below the mean, that many standard deviations below the mean. Okay, now let's look at, a, at an actual problem and we'll use this value right here, that Z value. In fact, just for our, our convenience right now, let's just call that Z so that it's easy to keep track of. So I'm going to assign that amount to Z. And uh, let's go to uh, here. Let me show you the problem that we're going to examine. So here's the problem we'd like to look at. We've got some starting salaries of 125 college graduates who have taken a statistics course. The mean of that sample is this much. The standard deviation of that sample is uh, 10,970. Okay. So we want to find the margin of error. Remember, the margin of error is, is how far it is from, from uh, here up to that boundary, from, from the middle of the interval <coughs> up to the top edge of the boundary. So that's what we're going to be, uh, be looking for. So we know how many standard deviations we need to, to be, and we know how to find those standard deviations. So it's just a matter of, of, taking that z, oops, of taking that z value that we just calculated times the standard error or the, the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means, which is going to be 10,970 div divided by the square root of uh, what was the sample size? 125. Okay, there we go. So we can take that particular amount, uh, $2,527 and about 37 cents, uh, and we'll just copy and paste that into here and check our answer. Ah, of course, it's right. Now, to actually find the confidence interval, we're going to be 99% uh, sure that uh, the mean is going to be this mean minus that uh, margin of error and that mean plus this margin of error. So let's refine this so that we can do those calculations. Just for convenience, let's name this mar ME for margin of error. Okay. So now it's going to be easy to do because we just need to take that 44,166 minus the margin of error. That's going to be the lower bound of this confidence interval. So let's just put that in there. And we'll find the upper bound of that confidence interval by 44,166 plus that margin of error. So that amount will go right there. And we can check our answers. And of course it's right. Okay. So there's the idea. The Some key vocabulary to know about is what this margin of error means. That's half the length of this uh, confidence interval. And what the standard error is, that is the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means and it's calculated by the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the size of the sample. Okay.